Hey again everyone. There's been a bit of interest in the Your TTS script I posted a couple of weeks ago, so I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up. I've tweaked the script a little to make things a bit more efficient and to hopefully improve the audio quality and the auto-generated transcripts a little bit. Now I do a lot of my work on an ancient Dell E6500 laptop with an enormous extended size 8 hour battery pack, which I keep forgetting has a resolution of 1200 by 800 so apologies for the fill bars on the sides of some of the videos. This is going to be a bit of a rehash of the first video, but hopefully a little bit more streamlined. If you haven't watched that one, you don't need to, unless you need the Koki TTS local install instructions or a local copy of the Python code. But if you're installing things on your own machine, you can probably handle copy and pasting the Colab Python code, running the bash commands by hand, and changing the path names on your own. If not, just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to sort it out when I have some time. I'm going to go over the Colab script from start to finish, so I'll cover the changes as they pop up. We'll start off by going through the beginning of the script where we create a dataset for a new speaker. You can repeat this multiple times to process the samples for several new voices within one dataset. After going through the script to the point where the dataset is made, I'm going to loop back around and talk about pre-processing the data before uploading the samples. Then I'll continue on with the rest of the script and go over some samples of models that I've been training. Alright, let's get to it. I haven't compiled the updated training units yet. I've burnt a lot of computing time training bad models due to some sort of misconfiguration. I did dozens of runs using Koki Trainer 0.0.21 and they all failed. I assumed it was something that I did, but then thought to check all my package versions. I noticed the trainer was mismatched with the one that ships with Koki TTS 0.10.2. Uh, so after downgrading the Koki Trainer back to 0.0.20, things went back to normal. Once I get a couple more models done, I'll update the notes in the notebook. The first cell will connect to your Google Drive account. If you have multiple Google accounts, switch the account from within Colab first, then go over to the web-based Google Drive and switch to the correct account, then run the cell to connect your Google Drive. For example, I have two Google accounts, but only one of them has extra paid Google Drive and Colab Pro access. There's often a really annoying sign-in loop if the two accounts get mismatched. After connecting the Google Drive, set some variables. If you're new to Colab, change the values first, then run the cell. DS name is the name of your dataset. Name it anything you like, but don't use any weird characters or spaces. Your dataset will be stored on your Google Drive in a folder with this name. Trainer output is a subdirectory of the dataset directory, and this will be where the trained models and associated files are stored. The upload directory is where the uploaded samples are stored. This is the base directory and will be created on your Google Drive. The model directory is the location of the pre-trained your TTS checkpoint, which will be downloaded later. You can leave this as it is if you're on Google Colab. The run name is a simple name to describe your training run. It's stored in the config file. Again, no weird characters or spaces. There are two types of runs for this training script, continue or restore. Continue is for resuming a previous interrupted training run, and restore is for beginning a new fine tuning session using the base checkpoint mentioned above. The next cell will build RNN noise and its requirements. This is a very effective library for denoising. The script later uses the example application that comes with RNN noise and some wrapper code to denoise the audio samples. The next cell will install SOX, OpenAI Whisper, and its requirements. And then run the next cell to install Koki TTS and force install Koki Trainer 0.0.20. Upload each new voice to a subdirectory of the sample uploads directory. For example, if you have a new voice named Bob, go to your Google Drive, make a directory named Bob in your sample uploads directory, and put all of Bob's MP3 or WAV format samples in there. Set the subfolder name and the name of the new speaker within the next cell. You don't need to be creative, you can name them the same thing. The next cell does a lot of the heavy lifting. The audio samples are converted to mono, 16 kHz files to standardize them and then pass to RNN noise. RNN noise requires upsampled files, so SOX will upsample them. Then the gain and volume flags are used to lower the chance of clipping. The waves are passed to RNN noise and after denoising are passed to SOX with a high pass and low pass filter. Pi loud norm is then used to peak and loudness normalize the final clips. The clips are then split using SOX two times. The first pass splits the audio based on silence intervals. It's currently set to 0.2 seconds, but you may need to adjust this up or down depending on your speaker. 
This generally splits speech into sentence segments, but there could be instances of long sentences over 10 seconds. The split files are then passed through SOX again to four splits of eight seconds. This may end up with some clipped words, but that might be better than simply discarding longer samples, because often the rest of the sentence is really high quality speech. Files smaller than 35 kilobytes are then deleted, because they'll be too small to be useful. The split samples are then converted to a FLAC format and renamed to correspond with the VCTK dataset format. Run the next cell to download the Whisper speech to text model. The Colab script is currently set to load the large V1 model, but if that doesn't work on your instance, click show code and switch to the medium.en model. Reloading the model often crashes Colab sessions, so run this cell only once. You can list the speaker directories with the next cell and then set the speaker to process with the following cell. The next cell will run Whisper on your audio samples. The large V1 model is quite a bit slower than the medium.en model, but the output quality is spectacular. Though you will need to retranscribe a few things by hand later due to how it handles numbers and dollar signs. Repeat the speaker processing and transcription steps above for each new speaker in the dataset. Koki has some general purpose guidelines for dataset creation in one of the GitHub pages that I'll link down below. All of these apply here as well, so it's a good idea to read it over. The samples I'm going to be working with in this video are going to be of terrible quality, so it might be difficult to get a stable model. In general, you want consistent recording quality, a high degree of fidelity, and as many samples as you can provide. To listen to audio samples in Windows, I like to use Sonic Visualizer. I'm a big fan of products with literal names. This lets you get a waveform or spectrographic view of the audio file, and play and scrub through it. It's lightweight, has negligible loading time, so if you need to go through hundreds of samples, this can be really helpful. The view panes are entirely customizable, and you can add multiple views for a single file or change the color scheme. I find something like the high visibility fruit salad works great when trying to discern peaks. Yummy, yummy. One of the green themes works great when looking at the total mix because the background noise really stands out. I'll let one of the audio samples introduce our voice model. With the world getting noisier and noisier, it's hard to find a nice quiet spot these days. And it's becoming harder. Even out here. Noise. There's no getting away from it. Well, it's got a fun old-timey feel, this is definitely not an ideal recording to use for making a voice model. This particular Mike Wallace interview has amplifier hiss, tape crackle, a bit of warble, but under it all there's still a richness to the recorded voice. This may be salvageable with some work. After sorting usable and unusable recordings, we can start the prep work. For quick trimming of files, WaveShop is a really handy program. It's ancient but should work on all Windows Control, systems above names. Windows XP. It's a bare-bones, non-destructive editor, good for Ron cutting Serling, things out of audio files writer, while not altering the rest of the Ron file. Serling, it's about as speedy as you can get. The first thing I want to do is isolate the speaker. Yeah. It's time-consuming to listen to the entire change. file and trim out things as they appear. If you get a feel for the relative volume and tone of the speaker, you may be able to visually scrub the, the audio file and clip the voices out easier. Here I'll need to trim out the bumper music and host so far. As I go through, I'll also look for any lengthy pauses and eliminate those. In addition, I'll try to trim out any loud, sudden sounds like hands hitting the table, coughs, stutters, or uhs, or really anything else I don't want the model to pick up. Looking at the waveform view can help with noise removal later on. Unfortunately, this is going to be a bit difficult for me to show because OBS decided to record at about 3 frames a second. If any of you have any suggestions for another free screen recording application that also grabs audio, preferably for Windows, please let me know down in the comments. The audio is going to skip around here a little as I'm dropping the playhead throughout the track to find segments that need clipping out, which would be apparent if the video was actually keeping up. If you look over there on the left hand side of the waveform view at the bottom, you notice a sharp periodic dip between 20 and around 80 Hz. 
These are some of the crackles. What about, what about you and Above around 8,000 hertz, I'm you'll see a dense level. concentration of peaks. This is some of the hiss. The low and high pass filters of the audio processing section of the collab script will clip out some of the frequencies to cut down on any of the noise that RNN noise may miss. I find WaveShop a particularly useful editor because of its speed. Just hit play and then drag to select the playhead and it will reposition. Hit delete and the selected segments will be cleared. WaveShop will only manipulate the edited segments so it won't alter any of the other audio. If you want to maintain the pause of a selected got, segment, you can use the insert silence the under the edit menu, I, I or use the keyboard shortcut alt and insert. The, years, the selected segments will be replaced by an interval un, of silence. Uh, heard means that inherently a combination of many things, Mike. The if you want to listen to the tracks pre-split but processed by R and noise, they can be found in the denoise subfolder in the sample directory. Here's that same Mike Wallace interview after noise filtering, applying the filters and some normalization. Even making up uh, uh, letters of, uh, what do they call it, uh, to plug a product. Somebody has used it, a liquid drug on the market at the time that uh, could cure everything from arthritis to a fractured pelvis. And I actually had to write test. After creating the dataset, download each voice tr and transcript for review. Whisper does a great job of transcribing, but we should undo some of its fine work. For this, I'm going to use Notepad++ because of its excellent file and text manipulation options. Under Search, bring up the Find Within Files option and select the path of your unzipped transcript files. Use star.txt as the extension and tell it to search within subfolders if you specify a base directory. I'm going to use the regular expression option to search for a specific set of characters, or rather, characters not within this specific set of characters. The square brackets specify the exclusion, the character tells the search to begin at the start of the line, the lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, 0 to 9, space, period, apostrophe, question mark, and exclamation mark are the characters we want to ignore. Everything else will trigger a match. This will catch a few things, percentages, transcriptions with the word slash, dollar amounts, partial or full quotations, and odd mistranslations in demon speak that Whisper does every now and again, and ampersands. After searching, you can right click on the search window and select open all to open all the files that matched. For mistranslations, I'll make a note of the file name and then delete both the clip and the transcript from the dataset. Windows search makes this pretty easy. From within the base directory, type the part of the file name and both components should pop up. Dollar amount should be transcribed back into natural speech, but be aware of how the speaker said the original phrase. Dollar sign one zero zero could be a hundred dollars or one hundred dollars, and these are clearly not the same words, although the concept is the same. The other thing you should probably do is transcribe numerals into their spoken forms. Actually start with zero and search each number through nine. Some speakers may say numerals close together or more, more rapidly than the rest of the speech, so you may want to join them with a dash. If you alter your dataset locally, you'll need to delete it from your Google Drive and re-upload. Google Drive has a nasty habit of becoming desynchronized, and it's a real pain when it does. If you delete your original dataset, the best option is to re-upload it through the Google Drive application. It's a lot faster for many small files. Use the Google Drive web interface as a second option, but don't bother uploading anything through the file browser in Colab because it's complete trash. Once the data set is finalized, we'll continue the Colab script by computing the speaker embeddings. This will take some time, but only needs to be done once for your data set. Speaker embeddings will be saved to speakers.json. Speaker ID should probably be saved to speakers.pth but I'll fix that later at some point. Currently they're being saved to speaker underscore IDs dot JSON. The next segment of the script will set up the audio configuration and model arguments. These are left as defaults from the original training recipe. Before running the next cell, you'll need to edit a few lines. If you're using more than one voice in your dataset, you can enable the weighted sampler. The script is set to keep five checkpoints along with checkpoints with the best loss. If you're low on Google Drive storage, save fewer checkpoints and set save all bets to false. But the only lines that you really need to change here are the test sentences. Replace vctk underscore rod here with vctk underscore whatever your new speaker name is. 
The next cell will manually engage the speaker encoder and save the model metadata to the dataset directory and then set the speaker IDs for the training data. The next cell will initialize the model from the configuration loaded into memory. If you are continuing a previous training run, you can list all the run folders in the trainer output directory by using the next cell, and then copy and paste the name of the trainer run into the following cell. The next cell will initialize the trainer with the specified run type, and then you'll begin training with the final cell. So here's how that Rod Serling model is developing. And here are a few samples of a larger dataset model that seemed to be going well until it had a CUDA crash. I don't understand how it could have happened, but when I attempted to reload, it appears the dataset is corrupted in some way. And somewhere in the mix of 15,000 odd files is a broken audio file that refuses to load. So that being said, keep a back of your dataset after processing it. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, but I'm not going to be silent. Be a voice, not an echo. I'm sorry, dude. I'm afraid I can't do that. This cake is brie. It's so delicious and moist. Took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. Be a voice, not an echo. I'm sorry, dude. I'm afraid I can't do that. This cake is great. It's so delicious and moist. When switching to my local machine, I increased the batch size for the loader. As you can see, this sped things up and improved the training quality, so a higher batch size may work better for you. Forcing the audio clips into 8 second splits or less helps avoid some of the utter memory errors. Also, another thing that helps inexplicably is correcting any unknown characters in the transcripts. I'm guessing when they're dropped, they're being padded, and sometimes the padding causes some overflow. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that, I, that I'm not going to be solid. The voice, not a nickel. Well, that's about all I wanted to cover today, since I've rambled long enough. This may get you a little further, you're failing with your TTS. I want to try training with a few frozen layers when I have some time and see if that changes anything. If you want a cold trip with a little more consistency, you may want to look at the VITS fine tuning script in my other video. Thanks for watching, and thank you to all the subscribers. The channel is well over 600 now, which is just wild. I don't really share these videos anywhere, so it's sort of depend on all you posting them on Reddit or Fortune or the algorithm reviews. Thanks for getting them out there. Back soon with another one.